Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Morning, good morning, Diane and Dr. Dufranian. I'd like my audience to know that Diane excuse me, is here to talk about a personal journey she's on. Diane, would you start with your journey before we speak with Dr. Dufranian about the medical? Sure. Um, when I was in my mid-40s, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, it started in my left foot and quickly progressed so that I wasn't able to walk on that foot at all. And uh, that was, it was a pretty scary time. And then it moved into my hands, and I am a writer um, and under contract to write novels. So I had to come up with a way to write, and I discovered voice recognition software. And I wrote two books using voice recognition software. And then over time, I was able to find the correct treatment for my RA. So uh, since that time, I've been able to write. Best-selling author, Diane Chamberlain. You know, she's diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. She's sharing her story, and she has written dozens of books despite the challenges of her condition. Dr. Zucranian, uh Diane is relatively young. Is, is this something, an age thing that she's dealing with? What's going on with her? Yeah, it's a good question, Valder. I think uh, what you're referring to are, are obviously there are different types of arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis uh, is a chronic inflammatory autoimmune condition that affects people at all ages of life. But typically between 40 and 70 years old are when most people are diagnosed with, uh, with RA. And that's contrasted with the, uh, the more degenerative osteoarthritis, which obviously is a little more age dependent. It becomes more prevalent as we, as we get older. Uh, so though it's uh, not uncommon, uh, rheumatoid arthritis affects about 1.6 million Americans, American adults, um, as opposed to a lot more who have osteoarthritis. Diane, after you receive the diagnosis, what kind of feelings do you have? Is it relief or is it sadness? What do you feel after you receive this diagnosis and knowing that it's a chronic condition? Right. I, I would say I felt fear. And I also felt some denial, which I think is very common when you get a serious diagnosis. Uh, it took me a while to deal with that fear. Uh, I found a support group that was tremendously helpful to me. Um, and I also developed a mindfulness practice, which um, still helps me to this day, 20-some years later, in which I, I, I'm not meditating, but what I am doing is taking time each day to focus on what's really important, focus on my loved ones, just look out the window at how beautiful the sky is, that sort of thing that really keeps me centered and keeps everything in perspective. That's a good practice, no matter what's going on in your life. Dr. Yeah. DeCraney, uh, are there any new breakthrough, any new treatment, any new medications for rheumatoid arthritis? Yeah, so uh, we're, we're lucky to live in an age where rheumatoid arthritis is better understood by science and understanding how it works and why it happens, we're better able to target therapies uh, against it. And so the last 20 years have really seen a revolution of a number of medications that have become available to manage not just the signs and symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, but really to prevent its progression and improve the quality of life and the function of people living with rheumatoid arthritis. So it's really important to partner with a rheumatologist who understands the disease to come up with the treatment plan that's best suited for each patient's individual needs. Diane, I'd like to ask you, you told, us, you told me about mindfulness that you practice, but how do you push through the uh, condition in order to continue living your passion? 
Yeah, um, I think one of the things was to find workarounds, uh, knowing that I still wanted to write. I used the voice recognition software. Um, I set up time each day that I know I'm going to write. I think about my mortgage and that I've got to pay it. So I, um, I, I really focus on my writing in that way. And then um, having that support network, both in my partner and in, in friends, is just so helpful, as well as a good re uh, relationship with my rheumatologist and finding the correct treatment for me. Diane Chamberlain is the New York Times and the USA Today best-selling author of 25 novels, including her most recent novel, The Stolen Marriage. Thank you for sharing, Diane. Doctor, I'm going to wrap up with you. Where can my audience find out more information? Because what I found out from the Valder BB show, I'm a national show, there is always someone that can identify with the topics that we bring to them. Absolutely. So given the number of people living with arthritis, any type of arthritis, uh, it's important to have as much information as we can. So as it relates to rheumatoid arthritis, a great source of information is obviously a rheumatologist or his or her extended team. Um, but we obviously don't have a lot of time uh, during an office visit to cover all the topics that are essential to cover, from the physical component of, of dealing with a chronic disease to the emotional and psychological components as well. So we're really lucky, uh, both Diane and I, to have partnered with Pfizer to contribute to arthritis.com, which is a great website that has not just information, but also inspiration, motivational stories such as Diane's, uh, and also helpful tips for people living with arthritis uh, to sort of round up the knowledge about the disease that they may not necessarily get from their rheumatologist. That's great information. I want to thank you both, Diane Chamberlain and Dr. DeCranian, for being here to talk about this subject and to continue the conversation. I want you guys, go, in a, go on Facebook, talk about it, go to the website, find some answers because the answers are out there. Thank you so much for being my guest today. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Valder.